spirit, soul, and body. There are often times when I say, God, you know, did I have to have this body? <laughs> um, I'd prefer to just, you know, have my soul and my spirit <laughs> so I could eat all the hot fudge Sundays I want. But however, that is not my uh, option right now. Maybe in heaven. I wonder if there's going to be an ice cream store in heaven. <laughs> um, but you and I, sometimes it's hard for us to comprehend and understand in reality what it means that we're three parts. We have three parts. Now, the scripture talks about it all the way through the Bible. It talks about it. But it's the walking out of it that is the, the key. When, when my husband and I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit many years ago, we would uh, sing all these songs. We walk by faith and not, and not by sight. You know, we, um, we, we, uh, we walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. We walk, you know, and... And I, I never really did completely understand it because I still had all my problems in my mind and my problems in my soul and, and my emotions and all of that. And it's one of the biggest battles. I've lived a while now, and I've, I've fought many battles. I've had many tragic experiences, floods and fires and uh, a plane that aborted on takeoff, nearly drowned in, a, in an ocean. I mean, I've had many, many things happened to me in my life that were challenging, but I think that the biggest challenge has been the challenge of the battle within me of soul versus spirit, soul versus spirit, soul versus spirit. So let's talk about the battle for the soul because in today's world, in this unprecedented situation, you and I need to follow and walk after the ways of the spirit the ways of life, not the ways that we're seeing and hearing every moment of every day and hearing about tragic stories. And I pray for all of you of the, of the, uh, for the tragic things that are happening in your families and in your communities, and, and we mourn for those who are mourning. We, we, we send comfort. And in handling these situations, we need to have a clear understanding of what is soul and what is spirit. So let's look in Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. So that's number one. This is in the Amplified Bible, Hebrews 4, 12. It's alive and it's active. So when we need active help, we go to the word of God because it's powerful. Look at Psalm 29. It's powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. So it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And the scripture says it here, piercing to the dividing line of the breath of life, and we'll find the word life there means soul, uh, and the immortal spirit of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Now, that's a powerful scripture. It says many things about the word of God, about the power of God, about what it can do in our lives, what it does in the earth, what it does in, but most of all, it penetrates the word of God. It penetrates it says there's a dividing line. There's a dividing line of soul and spirit. A dividing line between the immortal spirit and the soul, the human soul. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 So may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things and make you pure and wholly concentrated to God, and may your spirit... That's pneuma, the breath, and soul, that's suke, 
the mind, will, and emotions, and body, soma, the word for body, be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And then 1 Thessalonians 1.8, all three of these scriptures, extremely powerful to help us to understand this concept and how to move with it, okay? So 1 Thessalonians 1.8, for not only has the word concerning from the Lord resounded forth from you, but everywhere the report has gone forth of your faith in God. Now, in the Hebrew, faith in God, it means the leaning of your whole personality on him. Now that's difficult. Oftentimes we separate our personality from our spirit and who God is. It's like we make a division between him and us. <laughs> so the leaning of your whole personality on him in complete trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. The complete leaning, that means my mind I submit it to him. I lean on him. We grew up in the Baptist church singing a song that I've used so many times because when you lean, you're, you're off balance as far as what you can control. You're leaning, and you could just fall right over, which I pray I won't at this particular moment. <laughs> but you, you lean, and it, it, it puts your confidence on the thing or the person for which you're leaning. So we sang, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. We lean on the eternal arms of God the Father and Jesus the Son. We lean on him, our whole personality, body, soul, and spirit. So let's talk about it. So when we get born again, of course we have our same body, too bad. <laughs> but our, our soul, we really actually still have our same soul, our soul learns to be born again. Our spirit is born again. He who is sanctified and he who sanctifies are one spirit together. So when we're born again, we become one spirit with his spirit. But we have to teach our mind that. That's why the Bible says put on the mind of Christ. Put off the old thinking. So our spirit has to learn it. I mean our soul has to learn it. Our mind has to learn it. Our emotions have to learn it. Our emotions have to get born again instead of of, of fear and anxiety and hatred and uh, offense and, and anger. We have to learn. We have to learn peace and love and joy and long-suffering and meekness and kindness. We put on the mind, literally, the mind of Christ. And we do that, according to these scriptures, by the Word of God, which is powerful. So we fill our mind with the Word of God, and our emotions learn to come in line. We learn not to respond in anger. We learn not to, to, to fight. We learn because the, the, the carnal mind is at enmity against God. We are a new creature, but the carnal mind, Romans 8, 7, the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God. You know anybody that's hostile to God? We can, we can get born again. We can... You know, learn to love God, learn to love Jesus. But when push comes to shove and bad things happen, our carnal mind wants to react the way it always has. <laughs> our mind's always been in control. The biggest, baddest enemy is the mind because the mind controls the emotions. It's the mind that tells the body to eat cake. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I used to, a, a faith teacher many years ago, I can't remember which one it was, but he was so funny. And he used to tell this story. He would say, listen, he says, my, my mind, I'm taking control of my mind, and my mind tells my body. Now, body, you listen to me. This is what we're going to do. 
And so my body says, give me a piece of pie. And my mind says, no, body, no, we're not having a piece of pie. And my body says, give me half a piece. <laughs> so, you know, you and I, we have to teach our mind how to come into the mind of Christ and allow Christ to give us that peace that comes with quietening our soul and and, and leaning on him, leaning our whole personality on him. Psalm 131 verse 2 is really interesting scripture. It says, Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child and his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. So when we are born again and we begin to train our mind and our soul and our, our emotions, our mind, will, and emotions. You know, when you have a new baby and that baby is not weaned, when that baby cries, everything hops. The, the, the baby rules the household because the baby cries. But when the child is weaned, it begins to learn that it can't have everything it wants instantly takes a long time but it does learn it so when a weaned child rests on the breast of the mother the weaned child is not demanding food the weaned child rests so that's how we calm and we quieten our soul now I'll be honest in this time in the, in our world it is difficult for my mind to be quiet it's difficult for my emotions to be quiet I I, I see injustice I see uh, terrible things happening everywhere and my mind wants to react the way I always reacted before and so I have to take that thought captive 2nd Corinthians 10 5 take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ if my thoughts are not into the obedience submitted to the obedience of Christ if I am not submitted to him then I will react in like manner I mean, it gets on you. The world gets on you. The rage and the hatred get on you. We don't respond to that kind of, of war, of that kind of a battle. We come back in the opposite spirit, which is love, joy, and peace, because that's where we live. So we're training our mind, our, our old carnal self, put off the carnal self, we have to lose it. We have to, we have to subdue it. We have to crucify it. Paul said, I die daily. I take up my cross and I die daily. That means it is not I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. So if Christ is living in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory, then I'm going to take my thoughts into obedience so that my thoughts can work with the wisdom of God. We have to have the wisdom of God in this hour. As never before, we have to have the wisdom of God. So Psalm 131, you know, we're, we're calming the soul. We're, we're, we're calming those raging emotions. Even hormones sometimes can make both sexes, male and female, do weird things. But all of that, body, soul, and spirit, becomes born again and begins to walk with the Lord. See, in, in Isaiah 55, the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are, are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, that's how far my thoughts are from your thoughts. Now, <clears throat> that's pretty clear. So if, if our thoughts... If we're going to just live in this world and think our thoughts, think, 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 think the way we've always thought, then we're not really born again in our mind. We're not really born again in our thoughts, in our thinking. I used to, I used to assume that if thoughts were in my mind, they were my thoughts and who I was. And that's just not true. The enemy of our souls puts thoughts in our minds, puts opinions in our minds, puts emotions in our minds, and we think they're ours. And so we just react to it, and we just think that way. And if 
we're thinking, say, say the enemy puts a thought in your mind and you think it's your own thought. And so then you go, yeah. And then you begin to pursue that thought. And then you begin to think about that thought and add some more thoughts to that. And, and eventually the thought becomes an action. And it's going to lead you down a path that is not the path of life. So it's not the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is not like a, it's not usually like a real voice. Like, you know, go to the hospital. Go to the fourth floor. Pray for the man in the spotted pajamas. That's not the way the Lord communicates with us. He communicates with us with gentleness, with leadings, with, with, uh, with, with something that's not the, the clear kind of, you know, words. Now, every now and then I will, as a prophet, I will have words in my, in my heart, but it's different. We have to learn to discern the difference between the thoughts that come that God is generating, that God is putting in our heart, the leadings to action that God is putting in our heart that, that, that will lead to life. So I think one of the main differences between our thoughts and the thoughts of the Lord is that the thoughts of the Lord, the, the, the leadings of the Holy Spirit, the promptings of the Holy Spirit lead to life. They always lead to fruit. They always lead to joy. They always bring us closer to the Lord. We go with what he brings into our hearts and we bind up and we cast out everything that is in opposition to our growth in the Lord so that we can live abundantly. Life abundant is found in him with his mind. Ephesians 4.22 says, Strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old, unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through the lusts and the desires that spring from delusion. See, if we start listening to the thoughts that the devil puts in our mind, it starts getting us down to a path. Or say we watch movies. I like movies, but if we're watching movies that we would characterize as dark, they're going to be movies that, that make you feel dark, that make you feel fear, that make you feel anxiety, that, that stir up feelings of hatred, that stir up murder and all kinds of mayhem, not to mention all the lust and all the lustful things that we see. If we fill our minds with that instead of with the Word of God that is sharp and active, then we're going we're gonna to go in a cycle toward those things. You see what I'm saying? So we have to put in what we will become. So we put in the Word of God. So it says, be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerated self, created in God's image, God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. He restores our soul. We find that in our favorite psalm, Psalm 23. He makes us lie down in green pastures, quiet waters, and he restores our soul. So there's a peace that he brings when he restores our soul. You and I, we need wholeness. We need to be able to lean our whole personality on him in this hour. We need to be able to listen to music that is God's music. God gives us songs in the night. He sings to us in the midst of the congregation. All of those are, are scriptures that teach us singing to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's what our inner life needs to be. We do conferences, and in our conferences, we see incredible musicians that are anointed to, pray, to play and to sing the songs that are sung around the throne. He's put a new song in our mouth, Psalm 40, verse 1 through 3. A, a song of praise. That's a song that's new, that's never been sung before. So 
We've taken those parts in our conferences of the new songs where the saxophone is playing a new song and the violin is playing a new song and the singers are singing a new song and life comes, life, 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 life comes and new wine begins to flow through us and we are renewed. It says a renewed mind, a renewed soul. We have a regenerated self. He is restoring us through the ways of life. And the ways of life are worship and prayer and, and the joy that comes in Him. Our mind needs to learn to have joy, not anxiety. Our emotions need to learn to have joy, not anger and offense and fear. So we've, we've got a, a, um, a series. It's, it's called Firestorm Prophetic Worship. That's the label. And we have several. One is new wine. You want new wine to flow through you. So fill your heart with new wine. Listen to God's music. Listen to the songs that are, that are alive, that feed you. Listen to sermons and teachings that feed you with the Word of God that bring life. We have another one called Holy Fire. We want Holy Fire in our lives. We want, to, to, we want Him to burn up all the dross and all the, the delusion and all that besets us and causes us to lose our hope. Hebrews 6 says, We flee to Him with refuge, with, with mighty, to, to have mighty strength and encouragement to grasp the hope that is set before us that is the anchor of our soul. These, these songs and hymns, they cause us to have an anchor in our soul. Instead of watching a dark movie, listen to live music. Watch live music. Watch worship that causes your heart to rejoice. The scripture says you will find rest for your souls. Hebrews 4, 9 through 10. So there's a rest from your humanness. There's a rest from your human mind. We enter in because he is awe-inspiring and full of joy. Joy, joy, joy. I was in a, a revival meeting one time that someone else was doing, and people were laughing everywhere. They were crawling on the floor, and I had just been on a three-month round-the-world mission trip, and I was very tired. I was very, I was just tired, burned out. You've heard that scripture, or you've heard that phrase, burned out. I was kind of burned out, so I went to this, these meetings kind of skeptical, and, um, and I could not explain away what happened, this laughter. And they told all, all kinds of stories came out of this revival. You, if I mentioned it, you would know what it was. And one lady, she was so drunk, just like the, the disciples on the day of Pentecost, she was so drunk that she was driving erratically when she was leaving the meeting, and she had the rest of the, she left early, so she had the rest of the service on her, on her, she had the rest of the service on her radio, and so she was just, man, she was, and she got pulled over by this cop, so, so the policeman walks up, and she's just, and she says, oh, you've just got to listen to this music, I was just, I was just caught up in the Lord, and I, just listen to this music, doesn't this just, and she, she got this guy, this, this policeman got saved, he got filled with the Holy Spirit and the, the, the revival meeting's coming out over the thing and she's going, and I mean, you can have joy too. You need joy too. And he said, lady, just go. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. It's contagious. I did a service one time in Switzerland and the, I, was, I was very tired. It was a long service and lots of ministry and people were lying everywhere all over the floor and they were laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. I told the pastor, I said, listen, I, I've just got to go, I, and I need to get something in and get my blood sugar up. So there was a McDonald's in Switzerland around the corner from the church. So we got up uh, chicken strips, and I was eating the chicken strips, and, I, and we drove back. We had to drive back by the church to get to where I was staying, and the people were still staggering out of the building. They were, they were so drunk, they were having to help each other out of the building. And that's where we're heading, y'all. This is time. It's time for us to put on the ways of the life of God. The, the, the carnal mind is going to make it's going to drive you crazy. 
there, there, there are going to be tormenting, harassing thoughts. So you take those thoughts captive and you put on live, living songs of the Lord and listen or you, you take out the Word of God and you read and let that, that Word of God that is sharp and active bring faith and rest and peace and your spirit begins to dwell. Sometimes I take out the books about the old generals and Catherine Kuhlman and, and all, of the, all of the ones, William Branham and, and all those people that, that saw incredible miracles and signs and wonders. And, and I begin to read about them and I begin to read the stories of the people. The little, the little child, one of them, the, the little child was brought, he was born without bones in his legs and his legs were just like rubber. And, and, and um, I think it was A.A. Uh, a. Allen, it might have been William Brown, I don't know, but they, he carried him around on the stage for like 30 minutes. He just carried him around. And slowly the Lord put bones in his legs. Now, if we, if we focus on the miracles, just like David said, I remember when you did this and I remember when you did. He encouraged himself in the Lord by remembering and so you and I, we need to fight all of this madness and this craziness out there by renewing our mind, by staying our mind on the Lord, by receiving and releasing the joy of the Holy Spirit. There is joy in the Lord that will give you strength for tomorrow. There is joy in the Lord that will give you strength just for the next hour. Just take it hour by hour by hour and allow the Holy Spirit to overcome you Mind, will, emotions, and body. All three, let the spirit, soul, and body be inundated, enraptured with the power and the love and the joy and the peace of the kingdom. It's a new day, and we are not going to focus on what we see, but we're going to focus on the Lord because he's our our shepherd, our redeemer, the lover of our souls. He's the one who loves us the most. We trust you, Lord. We trust you to bring joy into our lives and into our minds. We replace that. All those harassing spirits, we replace them with your joy and your strength. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. We lean our whole personality on you today. Thank you, God.